So over the last couple of days, a big topic that's been getting discussed a lot online. Um, seen it some on the news also, actual TV news. But it's really big, getting shared around Facebook a lot. A lot of chatter online about this. And that is that Trump is considering a ban on e-cigarettes. Now, um, start off with this little comment here for those of you who think that i shouldn't be making a video about this because i sound like i smoke about 20 packs a day right now once again i'm just fighting off the cold right now so you'll have to forgive me for how i sound for these videos until i get better but no i don't smoke 20 packs a day that's not why i'm making this video um nonetheless i have vaped um it actually helped me stop smoking now of course i never really smoked for 20 years like some people um, I started smoking um, about 16 years old by the time I was up to 18 years old I had completely stopped smoking so it wasn't very long um, nonetheless I had done it long enough that it came a little bit you know habitual and I just found the vapes and from there it went you know the vapes really helped me stop. Now, I've gotten off of vaping um, pretty much all together as well. I haven't hit a vape in probably over six months. Um, and if I were to try to go get one right now, I'd have to go completely re-get my, you know, buy my tank and everything. I've still got the battery, but my tank and all's shot them. Sure, by now. Especially, uh, at least the coils are, you know. So, um, but with that being said... Oh, I, I do have a dog in this fight because I have vaped before. And what actually ended up just getting me completely away from that, I weaned myself down to zero milligrams of nicotine on the uh, vape because the uh, place where I was going, they actually sold some CBD oil that you could burn through your e-juice. So I started getting zero milligrams of nicotine and started using CBD. Of course, Got myself off of it all together, and then from time to time, I still just take some CBD under the tongue if I'm a little stressed. Um, so, that being said, you'll notice this that, that vaping has been out now for some years. So why is it that this big spike in the increase in death and all that that they're reporting being caused by vaping, why is that just now coming up why is it just now becoming an epidemic these vapes have been out for a long time i remember all sorts of different variations of these e-cigarettes and vapes i recall little pen style vapes little blue e-cigarettes i remember those things okay from there we started getting into the great big cloud blowers you got what they called rdas okay you build your own coils out of wire get a little screwdriver a nice little thin not very thick screwdriver you get a right gauge of wire you get it all the way down to the handle you roll X amount of times make a nice little coil you put them inside the RDA pack your cotton The best kind was uh, the non bleached Japanese cotton you pack it down in there and then you take your bottle of e-juice and you squirt it all over the cotton get that cotton nice and saturated Probably hit your battery a couple times, get it working, squirt you some more juice back on there, put the cap back on, and you are all set. I remember those things. Good taste, good hit, blow out great big cloud, you'd cover your head up and smoke basically. Okay, and then those were popular. Then of course people, you know, didn't like having to drip all the time. That's what they used to call the drips. Okay, people didn't like having to drip all the time. So the more modern tanks started coming out, you could hold more juice, still get a good hit, still blow a big cloud. Of course, that became popular, so people started going more to the tanks. That was about where my stopping point was. Um, I never 
went beyond the tanks because see now there's this new thing out there and this is the one thing that does concern me a little bit um now i haven't used it i haven't used it and i'm probably doing what i'm going to criticize here and that's listening to too much of the media but I've, I've only been able to really research stuff about this product i'm not used it i don't know if it hits me any different than the tank would have hit me with a um, you know, just some regular weed juice I used to buy, buy from a local store around here. Okay. So I really don't know what the difference in these two are going to actually be. What I have read and what I have learned about this new phenomenon that's been hitting the market lately are these Jewel e-cigarettes. That one is a little concerning. Simply because, we'll just read what the Washington Post has to say about that for a moment. Alright, so what do we have here? The Food and Drug Administration, in a harsh warning letter Monday, of course this was done on September 9th, criticized Juul Labs for illegally marketing its e-cigarettes as less harmful than regular cigarettes and ordered the company to correct the violations immediately or face tougher enforcement actions. The agency said it acted after reviewing testimony from a recent investigation by a House Oversight and Reform subcommittee into Jules marketing and promotion practices. The Economic and Consumer Policy Panel in July's hearings, accused Jewel of deploying a sophisticated program to target children and teenagers, including at schools and summer camps, as part of an effort to become the nation's largest seller of e-cigarettes. The FDA's warning letter said the testimony showed that Jewel marketed its vaping products as modified risk tobacco products meaning the company included claims that the products present a lower risk of tobacco-related disease or less harmful than one or more other commercially produced or, excuse me, marketed tobacco products. Under federal regulations such as modified risk claims must be authorized by the FDA. Jewel's failure to get such authorization, the FDA said, means that the company sold and marketed adulterated products. The FDA noted that the testimony at the congressional hearing indicated that a Jewel representative speaking at a school said Jewel was much safer than cigarettes and that the FDA would approve it any day. The panel's investigation based on the 55,000 documents was detailed in a hearing and a memo compiled by subcommittee staff members. Jewel officials who testified said they had ended the school programs and that the company no longer sold many types of e-flavored cigarettes in retail stores. A Jewel spokesman said the company will fully cooperate with the FDA. The FDA action comes as federal health authorities investigate five deaths, from mysterious lung illnesses tied to vaping, there are now 450 possible cases in 33 states and one territory, including five deaths, they said. Although officials said the definitive cause of the illnesses remains unknown, the severity of the illness and recent increase in the in incidence of this cynical, or excuse me, clinical, lie. God Almighty, I can't read or talk today. The recent increase in the ascendance of this clinical syndrome indicates that these cases represent new or newly recognized and worrisome cluster of pulmonary disease related to vaping. According to a report by health officials in Wisconsin and Illinois, a large number of victims seem to have used marijuana products though a small number said they used nicotine vapes. Many of the samples contained vitamin E acetate that experts said could cause lung injury. The FDA, in a second letter sent to Kevin Burns, 
Jewel's chief executive officer on Monday, asked the company for documents and information about several marketing and outreach practices detailed in the July congressional hearing. It said that despite Jewel's commitment to address the surge in youth use, the company's products continue to represent a significant proportion of the overall use of e-cigarette products by children. Some of this youth's, uh, youth use appears to have been a direct result of Jewel's product design and promotional activities and outreach efforts. The FDA is also raising questions about Jewel's Make the Switch campaign, which the agency worries presents Jewel as a safer alternative to cigarettes, despite the fact that the FDA has not authorized such a message. In addition, the agency has asked Jewel to explain why it uses nicotine salt e liquids and has a high concentration of nicotine in, it, in its jewel pods, which officials said could increase the product's addictiveness. The agency wants answers to those questions within 30 days. The FDA, in a letter to Burns, also said that in April 2018, it had asked the company for documents relating to marketing practices and research into marketing efforts of product design, public health impact, and adverse experiences, but it said the company apparently provided Congress more documents than it gave the FDA. In the statement, Acting FDA Commissioner Norman Ned Sharpless said companies must demonstrate with scientific evidence that their specific product does in fact pose less risk or less or is less harmful than conventional cigarettes. Juul has ignored the law and very concerningly has made some of these statements in, our school, in school to our nation's youth, he said. The FDA on Monday has given the company 15 working days to respond to the warning letter and demand a description of corrective actions and a plan for maintaining compliance with the law. The inability to ensure compliance may result in the FDA initiating further action, including, but not limited to, civil money penalties, seizure, and or injunction, the agency said. Alright, so, with that being said, I don't want everyone to think that I'm reading that article because I'm about to condemn these things entirely. No. Um... And actually, while doing some more research, I found you, some of the stuff that I had been reading about Jewel, I can't even find on Google. For example, there was something that I had read uh, some two or three months ago talking about the salt nicotine that Jewel uses and how it actually had such harmful effects that they weren't really telling you about. I can't find a thing about that. I can't find a thing about that. So that makes me suspicious that could have just been some attack from you know some big tobacco funded company or something you, you, you get where i'm going with this because we're, we're about to dig into that in a moment so but but honestly though what is more concerning with anything i will have to say about the e-cigs and stuff is that yes i do think it is being pitched in a lot of ways to younger people as the next cool thing to do and I have to I have to say this to a lot of people out there okay in terms of smoking cigarettes and for people who vape okay one thing that I've never made any sense out of if any of you out there want to be mad with me for saying this hey oh well is what it is but if you've never smoked to start with don't start vaping really see what that was meant to do was to help people stop smoking okay that was the goal 
And the overall goal was to get you to where you're actually doing nothing. Of course, it come with these flavors and stuff to help with, you know, so it had a good taste. You got your nicotine hit and you didn't hit the cigarette. Okay. That being said, people, a lot of people that I know even, weren't smoking cigarettes but started vaping. I just, just don't, don't, don't do that you know and if you're going to here's the one that really took it over the top for me okay if you insist vaping looks so cool this and that that you're going to start vaping for god's sakes don't buy nicotine to go with it seriously there's no reason they make vape juice without nicotine don't get the nicotine you don't want to get yourself hooked on nicotine. It's it's not what it's cracked up to be. Now, that's as far as nicotine and cigarettes and all that are concerned. Now, the ones where they've got the marijuana or THC products, I don't know anything about those at all. Um, I don't live in Colorado, and it's still very illegal here in South Carolina. So I can't speak to that. What I will say... What I will say, though, is that, quite frankly, I do feel like the majority of all this is either being misled, because even in that article you saw, they still haven't completely determined the cause of these deaths. They're just linking them because these, these people probably all vaped. It's probably what it's coming down to, okay? So I am a little concerned with the thing on the kids. And if they're trying to advertise this to high schools, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be doing that. We need to get young people in this country away from smoking cigarettes altogether. You know, and for that matter, they don't need to be smoking pot and anything else in high school. But I, hey, it wasn't all that long ago I was in high school. I also know that's a very high uphill battle in today's society. Okay. And kids are going to do what kids do. They're going to get into stuff. They're probably going to end up drinking before they're 21. They're probably going to end up smoking. Probably going to end up smoking pot. You know what? At the end of the day, I think that those are all things for adults to do. You decide once you're grown enough and have, if you, you know, are raised right, your parents do the best they can with you. Even when you're a teenager, it doesn't matter how good your parents are, they still hit a rebellious stage. Teenagers still hit that little rebellious stage where they, they just don't want to listen. And it's not until they get a little bit older, get a little better level head on their shoulders, start living in the real world, having some responsibility, trying to maintain a home, build a family. Then they have that level head on their shoulders and can determine, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing for me? Now, some people still don't always use their head for something besides a hat rack. They still make poor choices. But you're an adult, you've got the right to make those poor choices now. No one needs to be advertising this stuff to children, period, okay, and trying to influence them. I, and I believe that for a lot of other things besides just this subject. You know, don't try to push, I don't believe in trying to push, you know, your products or your influence or whatever onto a child because a child, even as a teenager, the brain is still developing they still are much more gullible at younger ages. You're going to talk them into doing something because they think it looks cool, seems cool. I know teenagers don't want to admit to that. I was one not too long ago. For Christ's sake here, I'm only 23 now. I mean, I look it, but I'm only 23 now, I promise you. April 30th, 1996. So I know a thing or two about a lot of people in this age bracket okay and then of course they don't want to admit that they're not thinking like real adults uh, everyone in high school wants to think they are real adults and have the same thought process as a real adult you don't realize just how different it is till you actually get out in the real world your brain keeps growing your body keeps growing and then you are in the real world and all of a sudden things change okay so I don't agree with that at all
first and foremost. But at the same time, let's just be honest here, people. Let's just be honest. Again, these deaths didn't start happening until very recently. And maybe it's because some of these newer products, they're starting to push the edge too much, pumping all that high concentration of nicotine in there. Maybe that is having some adverse effects. Maybe, may, maybe there is something to it. I still find it highly ironic. It's just now happening. It's just now happening. Okay? And my thing is, okay, if that's true, I would support some regulation. I would support some regulation. However, you have to be careful with that. A couple of years ago, the federal government started hitting at the concept of trying to get the FDA involved with vaping to the point you'd have to pay for licenses for your products. And each juice had to have its own license. Really? The overall point that I'm getting at when I'm explaining that is that I talked to a store owner. I used to speak to a owner or two, there were co-owners of a local vape store here in the Spartanburg area of South Carolina. Okay. Both of them basically told me, here's what they're doing. Big business interests. Follow the money. That's what it always comes down to. What they were doing, or what they were hinting at doing anyway, they never went through with it, thank God. But what they were hinting at doing was saying that, okay, all you mom and pop shops, you're not going to be able to afford this with your over 50 flavors. You're not going to be able to afford to buy a license for each one of these. So we're either going to cut how much you can sell, you'll only be able to afford a few, in which case... That's going to hurt your business big time, isn't it? Or we're just going to put you out from the get-go. The end result being, you're going out of business. And who's going to last? The people who got the money to shell it out and pay us. So once again, the federal government trying to be the old uh, you know, adage of the mafia, basically holding up businesses they're not coming in and saying oh your product now of course they're going to do it under the disguise of this they're going to come in and say oh well the way you get the license is we have to examine your product to determine whether it's safe or not do you really believe that do you really believe that if they were trying to determine whether a product was safe or not they wouldn't even have cigarettes on the market today or oh, they'd just slap a warning label on it that's what they would have done and you think about how many chemicals are in a cigarette 4,000, including chemicals that can be found in rat poison, dog poop, and cat piss. And you're smoking that crap. Okay? So, you can't tell me that if you're going to smoke that poison into your body, that the vapes are actually that much worse than a regular old cigarette. Because you're not just smoking regular tobacco. And nicotine. Oh, no, 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 no. They put all this other crap in it. For flavoring and extra addictiveness. And so, they're, again, they're going to bat for their financial interests. It's what they've been known for doing. It's what they've always done. And at the end of the day, it's what they're going to continue doing. Okay? And with that being said, let's just take a quick look at just how much money... These politicians are raking in from big tobacco companies. All right, so right here is a list of the top 20 recipients from big tobacco company donations. Note right here, okay? Now, this is just for 2018. Let's see, do they have a 2019? Uh, no, it just goes to 2020, which we're not there that, uh, just yet, okay? So... For 2018, let's just take a look. $63,963 to Tim Kaine, a Democrat from Virginia. Now, for those of you who don't recognize that name, <coughs> Hillary's VP choice. 
okay, $63,755 to Republican George Holding from North Carolina. He's a member of the House. Okay, $57,850 to Tom Tillis, another Republican from North Carolina. He's a member of the Senate. $53,350 to Kevin McCarthy from California, another Republican. $40,065 to Tom Cole, Republican from Oklahoma. $39,850 given to Mark Walker, Republican from North Carolina. $37,750 to Mark Warner, Democrat from Virginia. $36,000 dollars exactly given to Robert Adderholt from uh, Alabama another Republican thirty four thousand eight hundred dollars given to Steve Scalise another Republican from Louisiana thirty four thousand six hundred dollars given to Mitch McConnell ding 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 oh I'm making that bell now, but by the way, uh, Kevin McCarthy's your House Minority Leader, by the way. Okay, so yeah, Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy, the Senate Majority Leader, as of right now in the United States Senate, and the House Minority Leader, both are taking large amounts of money from big tobacco companies. Gee, what a surprise. Okay, $34,100 given to David Ru Ruser. Uh, another Republican from North Carolina, $33,821 given to Marsha Blackburn, Republican from Tennessee, $33,355, Bill Nelson in Florida. Now, of course, for those of you who are not registering that one, Bill Nelson is no longer in there. Bill Nelson is gone. Bill Nelson did not get reelected. Okay. So you can take that one off, okay? So just 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 scrolling down through the rest of this list, I mean, there it is, you know. And and, and number twenty on the list, uh, Barbara Comstock, Republican Virginia, twenty five thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. She is bringing up the rear of this list, okay? So what does this show? This, this shows just how much money the big tobacco companies are pumping into politics to keep their financial interests afloat. Okay, they, They've been doing it, they're going to keep doing it, and they're going to keep doing it because why? You've got some reports out there floating around that big tobacco companies have lost nearly a hundred billion dollars in sales thanks to e-cigarettes and vaping. And so again, I say you have to question, are these devs really that linked to vaping as they say? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Honestly, I could see where they may be because sometimes people get a little sloppy with their products. They want to make something that's cheaper but gets the same effect. That is a big problem with a lot of products on the market. Even drug dealers have been known to do it when they sell their pot, for example. They don't want to give you straight pot, so they lace it with other crap so they can sell. It's cheaperly made, basically. They lace it with other crap. You, know, well, you, you, you get where I'm coming from. It may not even necessarily be cheaper, you might say, because they're adding extra drugs to it, but it has adverse effects and things like that. So whether it's for cheaper cost or whether it's just because they're sick, twisted people and want to harm somebody, it doesn't really matter. It is possible some of these more modern products, since I've kind of gotten out of vaping, could be more dangerous. It is possible. And if that's the case, when I said we need more regulation, it shouldn't be the type of regulation like they pitched before that's just going to run small business out of business. That regulation does nothing productive whatsoever. It's a money racket. If we're going to have regulation, it should simply be that people come and they run tests of your juices and they make sure that they're not basically overly, you know, loaded with some chemical that could cause harmful effects. And even once again, I'm going to be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist and say you still have to be careful with that because the big tobacco companies are buying the government. 
And if they're buying the government, they could be given false reports of their testings saying, yeah, we're finding X, Y, and Z in this crap. So no, we're shutting you all down. Once again, there is the problem with regulation. But the problem with no regulation is you're leaving the door wide open for people to come out here and actually make a bad product that really could be harming people and isn't actually safer than cigarettes. You've got bad problems on both sides of this aisle right now. Something's got to be done. But when you have all this corruption in the politics, all this big money being donated to the politics, it's awful hard to believe you're getting a completely unbiased report and opinion from the federal government on this issue when they're being bought by the people whose financial interest is to get rid of vaping. That makes it very hard for me to trust what their report says. So, I, I will leave it up to each individual person. Take what you want from this video and believe what you want. But at the end of the day, in my personal opinion, I do think vaping is safer than cigarettes. And I do not agree if President Trump tries to ban these products. I don't agree with that whatsoever. Like I said, perhaps some regulation, but at the same time, I really want to see good, cold, hard facts from these regulations and from the investigations that come when they come to inspect the products or, or whatever. But I don't support the kind of regulation that was being pushed a few years ago. That regulation is no good. And if they push a regulation, I think it needs to be heavily investigated and held to a good standard so that the tobacco companies are not just secretly behind the scenes using that regulation as a way to push e-cigarettes off the market. Because if they're going to do that, then in my opinion, if, if any of this regulation, if any of the regulation is going to result in the banning of the product, then in my book, they need to start doing it to cigarettes also. Because you can't tell me that something laced with 4,000 chemicals is that much worse for you than vaporizing, you know, a, a liquid vapor and pumping that into your lungs. Instead of burning paper and tobacco and actually inhaling real smoke that's laced with 4,000 chemicals. The, you know, I, I'm no mad scientist, but that's just one of those things I don't think you have to have a science degree to figure out. One definitely up front seems more harmful than the other one. And they're not making those products illegal. And not that I think it would do any good, perhaps. I'm not a prohibition of any kind fan. Okay? Prohibition just hasn't ever worked in this country. And so if they try to make these e-cigarettes illegal, and they do do that, you're opening the door to the, that prohibition. People will make their own versions of it from home. And then you're running the risk of dangerous products really being on the market. So that being said, we hope you'll tune in next time. But This is my take on the e-cigarette issue. And again, I really hope President Trump does not go through with his decision or what he's been hinting at as a decision to ban these products. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Independent Report. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and like the video. Also, if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to ask or topics you'd like us to cover, please drop a comment in the comment box below. And also, please subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, ring that bell so you'll stay up to date when we drop new videos and you'll get notifications of it. And also, please support us on Patreon. Funds are going to be used to grow and improve this channel so we can reach more and more people and spread the message that the mainstream media doesn't want to tell people. We hope you'll tune in next time.